Yes, people, what's going on, man? We're back with another stream. Yo, the content just keeps flying in at the minute. Flying in at the minute, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of news at Chelsea at the moment. You know, we got the big here we go yesterday on, on man like Conor Gallagher. You know, finally, finally said yes to Simeone. You know, finally said yes to another system which should hopefully help him flourish. A system where he can run around and win the ball back and do all of that. You know what I'm saying? Come on football. Like I said on the stream the other day. You know what I mean? <laughs> but listen, I thought I'd put a little video together. Give my thoughts on this situation. Because again, I saw Chelsea go into a meltdown. You know what I'm saying? You've got all these guys that think every single person from Cobham should be treated like a god. That's the problem. I don't give a damn if you're from Cobham. If I don't think you're at the level that you need to be at to be playing for Chelsea, I'm going to speak about it. You don't, you don't just escape criticism because you're from Cobham. What's this about? Hmm? Are we a charity? Because these are the same people that will talk about standards. They, they, they say we can't criticise Cobham and we've got to, you know, treat Cobham like one of our own and all of these things. I hate all of that. But that doesn't mean that from a football point of view and from a business point of view, you're not allowed to, you know, to, to, to criticise these players. You're not allowed to want better because they come from Cobham. Football does not work like that. You know what I'm trying to say? Make sure that you're smashing up the likes, people, as always, man. Roll to 3K, like I said. Leave your comments in here, as always. Like I've said, I'm always in here interacting with you guys. Because this has been a massive talking point within the fan base. Massive talking point. You know what I mean? And just to give you a little bit of history of Conor Gallagher, listen, this was a guy that I heard about in the academy. He was doing bits. Um, he went on loan to Charlton. He had a very good loan in the championship, actually. And then after that, he came back, went to Swansea. Um, his loan over there wasn't, wasn't the greatest, to be fair. Um, and then he went to West Brom as well. Um, they got relegated that season, I believe, from, off the top of my head. Uh, you know, wasn't wasn't the greatest greatest time there either. I could see that he could bring a little sign in terms of goals from midfield and that. But overall, it weren't the best loan. But the time when he's, he actually made a name for himself was the loan at Palace, where he did really well. You know what I'm trying to say? He was scoring goals from midfield, crashing the box. As always, people were talking about Lampard-esque and all of these things. You always going to get that when you've got a midfielder that crashes the box. That's how good Lampard was at doing it, you know? So I thought, okay, cool. Say less. This is a guy that I'm going to be looking out for in the next few pre-seasons. Let's see what he can bring to the first team. Because if he can bring goals and assists from midfield, I'm all for it. He might not be the, the prettiest on the ball. You know, Lampard wasn't the prettiest on the ball on the ball all the time. You know, he, he had a, he did have a little bit of flair to be fair at times, but he wasn't the prettiest on the ball. But he was very effective with the with the man of GA that he used to get. So I thought, okay, this is definitely a midfielder that's in that sort of mold. Works really hard, you know, off the ball. And on the ball as well, he, he he can at least get some numbers. So let's see what he can do. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, but yeah, from when I saw him under Tuchel, I just never, never really fancied him. He never just, he never really did anything where I looked at him and thought, oh, this guy looks special. You know, he looked very bland to me. You know, everything that, that I was bigging up, I found speaking about him off the ball. It was never really anything to do with him on the ball, you know? He really struggled playing in a two-man midfield. He would just be running about, hurting people. When he would get the ball, taking too many touches on it, dilly-dallying on it, you know. And when we finished 12th, I was praying, praying to God that he will be one of the people that will get sold in that summer because he just came off of a bad season. Yeah, I know there was a lot of players that were bad in that season, you know, under Potter, but he was one of the, the worst players in that team as well. You know what I'm trying to say? He had, he had a few opportunities with Potter as well, you know. So I was looking at him and saying, yeah, he needs to be on a chopping block. But then we hire Poch. And I said to these lot in a group chat, because I'm in a group chat of all the, all the Chelsea boys, and I said, listen, this is Poch's type of player on paper, right? Because he presses off the ball and he does all of that. You know what I'm saying? Poch loves that. That's what Poch loves. He, he, as a first, he loves players that are going to give him energy and run for him, right? It's all about fitness, all about running. So I knew he would love Gallagher. You know what I'm trying to say, right? Obviously, he ends up staying at the club, you know, even though I, I, ideally I wanted to sell him. You know, and he, he did, he did, he did quite well. I, I saw a lot of improvements in his game. I was bigging him up. You know, I, I could clearly see that the instructions that Poch was giving him was helping him. I could clearly see that the system was helping him. But at the same time, I could see that there was other midfielders there, like a Caicedo, like an Enzo, that weren't being prioritised. It was all about Gallagher in this midfield, you know, running and pressing from the front and leaving all this space behind him. But a lot of people would ignore these things. They'll see Caicedo being left in all this space, Enzo being left in all this space because Gallagher's just running off pressing 
And they're like, yeah, but Gallagher's your best performer right now. Gallagher presses for you guys. Gallagher works hard for you guys. And every time I would tell them, yo, th- would you take Gallagher in your midfield? I don't ask, I don't ask Arsenal fans. I'm sorry, I'd ask Arsenal fans. I'd ask Liverpool fans, United fans. Yeah. As bad as United's midfield are, these guys will be telling me no. They'll be telling me no. But all of a sudden, Gallagher seems to be this answer for Chelsea. I could see through all of that. I just knew that these lot wanted Gallagher to stay as as our as our as our main option in that midfield because they knew that we were never going to progress with him. Because unfortunately, he's not that he's not at that level to be starting week in week out. He's not the worst player I've ever seen. It would be unfair for me to say that he's not the worst player that I've ever seen. But I've always said Gallagher is a squad player, and you start him in certain games, maybe in games against, for example, Arsenal when we played Arsenal at the Bridge. And he just pressed the hell out of Declan Rice and Jorginho. Made, made them give the ball away so many times. When we played against Man City in the midfield, just pressing Rodri, not letting Rodri have any time on the ball. Those are the sort of games where I didn't mind the Gallagher starting because at least there's a, there's a role for him there off the ball. You know what I'm trying to say? Because against these teams, you might not have the ball as much. So when you do get the ball, he's going to help you in a transition as well. Because when it comes to the transition, he's good at that. He can quick, you know quickly crash the box, get from A to B very quickly because the guy's got about five lungs. He ain't got one lung. He got about. He ain't got two lungs. Sorry, he's got about six lungs. He doesn't stop running, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's even had to do a little ponytail now, so the hair doesn't brush in his face <laughs> with all the running that he's been doing. You know? But it was very, very clear to me in terms of the ability on the ball. He just wasn't at that level. It wasn't at that level. And what Poch was doing? Poch was playing him in the ten. And for me, Gallagher's not a ten. He's more of an eight. He's a he's a box to box midfielder. That's what he is. And his biggest strength is crashing the box and, and again, winning the ball back, off, you know, and, and pressing all of that. That's, that's, they're his main strengths, right? In that 10 role, he just wasn't creating. He wasn't helping us, you know, break down any low blocks. He hasn't got that eye of a pass, you know, to just play it. The amount of times he would get the ball in the final third and he would break down our attack. It was unbelievable. And I, I said it million and one times last season, even the season before. He honestly plays like his boots are too big for him. Like he's slipping everywhere. I know so many times there's so many passes he can make to just play it forward, progress the ball forward. He would go sideways, you know? There's a pass right in front of him. He would do the harder one. You know what I'm trying to say? And he would find himself in so many good positions where Jackson's there, where Sterling's there, where Palmer's there, and he can just slip it through to them. But he, he, just, he just didn't have the ability to do it. And that was the really frustrating thing with Gallagher. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes, he got some assists last season. He scored. He, he got a few assists from like, um, from from corners last year, um, and obviously he scored a few goals as well in the season. But this guy could have had a lot more if he was more clinical in front of goal. You know, if he was more decisive in front of goal or in the final third when you're seeing people making runs off of you, you could have had a lot more. And I said for me, listen, this guy might not be the the best footballer, right? But if he's getting me goals and assists consistently in that midfield, I can't really say much. I can't really say much. But I had a problem with it when I'm seeing the likes of Carney not getting any game time. Yeah, Palmer for me was the best option to play down the middle. And then you play a Madwaki on the right, for example. But we're having to play Palmer on the right, Gallagher in the 10, because Poch thought this guy could do everything. You know, he then switched it around and played Enzo in the 10 and played Gallagher in the pivot, which was even worse. Because Enzo's not comfortable in between the lines. And Gallagher in the pivot, when he's, when he's getting pressed, he is not comfortable. Yeah, not comfortable. I go to a lot of games and a lot of the games that I was at last season, I was sitting behind the goal. So I can see, I can see these guys receiving the ball and build up. And Gallagher, yeah, listen, it's it's very clear when you've played football before, when you can see when someone doesn't want the ball in that first phase because they're scared to lose it. The amount of times I'm seeing him trying to hide or not really trying to show, show, for, the, uh, show for the ball, the angles that he's creating are a bit awkward. So the defenders are looking, 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 they can't play to him. They end up losing the ball, you know, or when he does get the ball, He's scared to take it on the half turn. He takes it and he goes backwards, you know? And there's so many opportunities where I'm looking at him and thinking, yo, if that was a Lavia there, Lavia would get the ball on the half turn, boom, forward straight away. And we've been seeing that in pre-season. I wasn't seeing that from Gallagher in the pivot, you know? And he wasn't really helping Caicedo on that pivot either because he would just leave him. He's so used to playing as, as an eight, he didn't know how to have that discipline in that pivot. And it wasn't so much on him. It was more on the manager that I was looking at for playing him in that pivot. You know what I'm trying to say? But again, it goes back to his ability, his ability on the ball. He just weren't it. But, you know, considering that he improved, I did say, listen, he deserves a new contract. I'll be happy for him to stay, but as a squad player. And that's exactly what the club offered him. They offered him two new contracts. 
because Aston Villa came in, you know what I'm saying? They offered this guy um, a, a contract to go, to go over there, play Champions League football, you know, go play with the likes of Matson on, you know, all of these guys that they, they've got some good players. Watkins, you know, some of these guys already, but he turned it down. After he turned it down, the club offered him a new contract, two years plus an additional year as an option, right? He turned it down. They offered him another one in July. So the first offer, the first contract came in June. They offered him another one in July. He also turned that one down. But to me, it's like, bro, have some self-awareness. We've got a new manager now who plays possession-style football, not transitional-style football, right, which suits you best. There's others in this team like Mpama, Nkuku, Carney, Dewsbury Hall, Caicedo. All these guys are more technical than you. So technically, they are in front of you, starting and off the bench, right? But because of how you've improved, they're like, cool, do you know what? We'll give you a new contract, prove to us that you can handle it in this system. And if you can handle it in this system, we'll give you another one. Because everyone else obviously is getting five-year, six-year contracts. He probably felt some type of weight. But they have been very transparent from day one that he's not part of their long-term plans. But they still offered him a contract, yeah? To opt to, for him to stay as a squad player and at the same time to protect his value. Because obviously he's in his final year and we don't want to lose this guy on the free. You know what I'm saying? Because if we do lose him on the free, that means that we haven't, we haven't got that straight profit, you know, which can go towards you know, buying these big names that all of these want, all, all of these guys want, Standard FC. This was the same Standard FC that was saying Gallagher should just stick around and, and 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 you know, not not leave and leave on a free. But in the same breath, they'll be like, oh, where, where, where's all these big name players? Where, where do you expect the money's going to come from? Because Gallagher's going to help us towards getting these big name players that you want or spending more money in the market next year. You know what I'm trying to say? So for me, like I've said, listen, you know, all these things start to come out after about the club just banishing him and he's not going to be able to use the training facilities. Bro, the club have got to do what they've got to do. If you're not going to sign a new contract, which they've tabled twice, whether people think it was a PR spin, for me, it was it was obviously to, to, to save face the way they reported it after. But they did, they did offer this contract months ago, even before they reported it, right? It's only recently they reported it that they offered him another contract. Do you know what I'm saying? So if he obviously didn't want to take that, and wants to, you know, kind of stick around, the club have every single right to, to, to not have him training with the first team. Because, end of the day, they don't want to lose him on the free. So, of course, they're going to make it difficult. It's business. It's not personal. And same way, Connor's going to make it difficult for them as well because he wants to stay at the club. It's not a personal thing. And that's what people need to understand. You know, they're saying, oh, they've only gotten rid of him because of straight profit. You're right. That is true. There is straight profit involved in this. But at the same time, don't ignore this uh, this guy's ability. He's, he's, he's not at that level for us to kick on to where we want to get to. Do you know what I'm saying? I go to a lot of games, yeah, and these lot at the ground honestly treat this guy like it's Iniesta. I can see Gallagher do a madness on the ball, kick the ball off the pitch under no pressure. They'll stay quiet. Two seconds later, da, 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 corner Gallagher. And I'm like, brother, did you just see this guy kick the ball off the pitch? I'll be getting crazy at Stanford, at the bridge, yeah, when he does something mad or when he's when he's being pressed under pressure and he just gives the ball away, right? Everyone around me is looking at me as if I've, I've done a madness. And I'm like, are my eyes lying to me? What's going on here? And this is the problem with a lot of this fan base. When it comes to Cobham, they're so sentimental about it. So sentimental about it. And now they're trying to crash it on the owners. They're trying to use it as a, as a place to point score. Do you know how many how many guys we lost from Cobham? I've, I've spoken about this before, people. How many people we've lost from Cobham previously under Roman? There was no clear pathway for those guys. And it only came after the transfer ban. You know what I'm trying to say? But look at look how they, they're treating Colwell. They said he's untouchable. Bayern Munich was snooping around. They said he's untouchable. Liverpool wanted him. We offered him a new contract. Reese James, we've made him our captain. Again, he's another one that's untouchable as well. That might change in the future if he carries on getting injuries and whatnot. And I understand that. But end of the day, if you're good enough and the guy and, and the owners and the sporting directors rate you and you're from Cobham, you are gonna feel that. Unfortunately for Gallagher, they don't look at him and and, and think he's up there the way that they, they rate the likes of, of Colwell and, and Reese James. That's unfortunate for him. You know what I'm trying to say? But end of the day, listen, we've given him that platform. You know, he he had a decent Chelsea career, to be fair. He could have even won two trophies last season. You know, in the final, Palmer puts him through on goal. He misses. You know, that, that final wasn't all on him. But if he scores that, I reckon we win. We win that We win that game and he leaves with a trophy, you know. But now he's going to go play in Spain. 
you know, nice, nice weather, playing Champions League football, playing for a well-respected manager, you know, playing with some good players. They're, they're now looking at Julian Alvarez as well. You know, it's not like we've we've lost him now and he's going to AFC Wimbledon. He's actually got a good move. And that's what I said to you lot before. When these lot leave Chelsea, these these Cobham graduates or these, these guys that we bring in, I don't want to be seeing them getting meaty moves. Make sure that you pattern them. Omari Hutchinson, we're patting him Ipswich, gone. Matson, we're patting, patting him Aston Villa, Champions League football, gone. Lewis Hall, Newcastle, gone. Livermento, Newcastle. You know what I'm saying? Mason Mount, Man United. Look at these moves that we're getting these people. So even if they don't make it at Chelsea, I'm glad that we're giving them that platform. Because I, I obviously, like I said, I don't I don't like Gallagher for our system. But it doesn't mean that he's a crap player. It doesn't mean that he can't work elsewhere. I think he'll do well at Atletico Madrid. You know what I'm saying? I think he'll do, I think he would have done well under Klopp, for example, at Liverpool. But for me, I don't like that chaotic football where you don't know if you're gonna win that game because of how open it is. I don't I don't like it. You know, Gallagher's not my type of tea, he's not my cup of tea. Not my he's not my type, not my type of player. You know, everyone's got preferences. And for me, I like technical players. Gallagher's not that. But I've always said I'm happy to keep him uh, keep him as a squad player. But obviously, he thinks he's at a different level to be a squad player. You know what I mean? So we move, man. We move. We move. We've got Dewsbury Hall, who's come in um, as his replacement. For me, he's a better player. He, he presses like Gallagher. And on the ball, he's a lot better. You know, for me, he should be able to get more GNA than, than Gallagher as well, because he's, he's more clinical in front of goal. His creativity is a lot better as well. His weight of pass is a lot better. And his left-footed as well. Actually, like, left-footed players are just, are just nice to watch. You know what I'm trying to say? And he just came off the back of a, of a season where he got 26 GA. Championship or not, bring me another midfielder that did that last season in the championship. You know what I'm trying to say? So we've got our replacement there already. We've upgraded on, on a Gallagher already. So I'm, I'm not stressed. Because I want, I want the likes of Carney to be getting these minutes. When Andre Santos and that come back, I want these guys to be getting a look in. I don't want a guy that's... That long term isn't going to work for us just to be there because he's from Cobham. It don't make sense to me. It don't make sense to me. I'm club first before any player. Yeah, I've seen the likes of Hazard leave, John Terry leave, Ashley Cole leave. All these men leave, bro. It happens. And I'm sorry, Gallagher's just not at that level to be crying about and making all this all this racket about. Because if he played for a different club and he was available right now in the window, there isn't a single Chelsea fan that would be saying, go get me a Conor Gallagher to help us push on. Yeah. No one, no one's going to tell me that they'll be looking at Gallagher in the market right now and saying, bring him. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. But it is where it is. You know what I mean? Good luck to him. It is where it is, man. You know? But listen, people, I'll be back tomorrow anyway. I'm going to go live tomorrow about four o'clock. Um, just putting a little panel together because we've got a lot to speak about on Marodian. Looks like that's going to happen, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, um, Osiman, he might be another one that could happen with Omarodian as well. Um, and obviously we'll wrap about about Gallagher as well. There's quite a lot of things that I want to speak about there. We'll get other people's takes and stuff. Um, but yeah, like I said, make sure that you're smashing up the likes. Leave your comments in below. And love people. Till, till the next one, man.